What's up everybody, Swiper here, and today I want to talk about an article I found. Well, I didn't really find it, Google found it for me, right? You know when you're in Google and they're like, hey, we recommend this article. Yeah, like that's what I'm talking about right there. And for once, it did its work, it did justice for me, right? So the title of the article here is Interview, Camel Unchained Mark Jacobs on the State of Beta and the NDA. Um, so this comes from Massively Overpowered, written by Bree uh, Royce. So why did, I, why did I read this article? Why am I talking about it, right? So in the weekly wrap-ups, we always hear about when's the end day going to be lifting? When's this game going to launch? And it's always you know, when we're ready, when we're ready, you know? And this article starts talking about things that don't get brought up. You know that don't get asked because I think a lot of backers already know this but I think a lot of people that are new coming into this game don't know this or don't fully know all the details so if you're new you may have heard that yes this game was delayed but do you know why it was delayed and if you're new did you know that they had to get a office in Seattle so they can hire more people you know these are some of the things that I don't know if everybody that's starting to follow this game or has been following this game fully knows or fully understands why and this article kind of touches on that and this is a main reason why i want to do this article is to just educate everybody so everybody has the perspective or everybody can have a perspective everybody can have an insight of what this company has gone through and what they're going through and and how far they have come so without further ado let's start you know, with the first question. Um, so this is kind of phrased a little oddly, but it kind of wraps it into one question here. So, so as I'm crafting these questions, we're coming up on the first anniversary of beta one. Can you give us a broad overview of how you think this year of beta has gone and what were the most remarkable advancements? So Mark goes on to talk about how uh, it's been a bit of a mixed bag. He states that hey, you know, the ability system took a lot longer than we thought and that um, the building destruction, large scale NPCs and arcs are some amazing things that have worked out. And the biggest advancement they have made is the 9.4 million block building that they've created that we've been firing siege at in our tests. Um, so that was basically it for that question. Uh, so let's move on to the second question. How much longer do you think this leg of beta will go on, meaning beta 1? Uh, you're planning more betas, right? But not early access shenanigans. <laughs> so Mark basically says that, um, yeah, beta 1 is supposed to be the longest out of all the betas. Beta 2 is going to be shorter, and beta 3 is going to be even shorter. So when we get to beta 3, hell yes. Yeah, we're getting close, right? We're getting close. <laughs> um... So if anybody's played Dark Age of Camelot when it first came out, or in beta, I guess they had a similar structure to this. I unfortunately was not playing Dark Age of Camelot when uh, it was in beta. I was playing much later down the line. Um, so anybody that's been playing Dark Age, maybe you can comment to this. Um, but anyway, let's move on to the next question. When will the NDA come down? Do you think keeping the NDA up for so long compared to other in indie MMOs in similar stages of development of production has caused PR problems for the game? Um, so some games don't mind streaming their games early because they're using great commercial engines such as Unreal. In, other, in, in the other case, because we're building our own engine, our early days were pretty rough. It's so much harder as expected when you're building almost everything from scratch, which makes perfect sense, right? I mean, they're building their own engine from the ground up. Nobody has done it. Nobody's code is going to be like theirs. Um, but anyway, let's get back to it. Um, and he says for uh, PR issues, he says uh, in the big picture, no. And he knows that some people are pissed and he understands why they're pissed and he respects it. But they've been up front like straight up they've been up front with us and really we shouldn't be surprised i mean how many times have you guys joined that weekly you know uh wrap up how many times have people said hey when's the nda gonna get lifted or when's this game gonna launch right um so speaking of launch uh let's move on to the next question right so 
A year and a half ago, you told us in 2019 a commercial launch was very likely, but it doesn't seem right now. Yes? Question mark. What's your best prediction for a launch window right now? And what about Cube's public launch? What about dropping some planned features to get it out the door faster? Is that on the table at all? Um, so basically, this was an awesome question because um, it's almost trying to force a, a response out of Mark here. And they also talk about Cube, which I don't talk about often. And I know there's a lot of interest in Cube. So anyway, let's get back to the answer. Um, Mark says it's still possible for a launch in 2019 as long as they get the engineers that they need. Um, they just added a new one. Um, so if we're going to have a shot at 2019, they're going to have to, sounds like they're going to have to get more engineers. Um, and it sounds like it's going to be possible if they get them. So it sounds like they have all the work planned out. Just need the right, they just need the people, you know? Um, and as for Cube, again, they need the engineers. Um, and they want to make Cube a thing, but I think overall right now, Camelot and Chain's going to, I feel like, be first before a Cube game comes out. Um, so let's see what happens. Let's hope that they get their engineers. Let's hope they're, they keep working their asses off and this game comes out in 2019. But hey, we don't know. We, you know, we won't know. All we can do is just hope that in their weekly wrap-ups, they say, hey, we got a new engineer. Hey, we got a new engineer. You know, that's all we can hope for. Um, so let's move on to the next question. Uh, last year, you inked a deal with a group of outside investors specifically to finish the game and hire more people to develop faster. Can we ask how that process has gone? Have your investors changed anything about the way you've been developing and designing the game? Similarly, has the addition of a second studio been worthwhile? All right, so this one is pretty, it's kind of long. So I'll go through maybe the first paragraph and then kind of uh, summarize the rest. So it's been going well in general, it's helped us. But at the same time, other studios have been recruiting like crazy at a salary range that we just can't compete with. So I didn't help as much as I would have liked. We're trying, but it's way harder than I expected. But if you look at the same things that led to a huge increase in demand for engineers, most of them couldn't have been expected a couple of years ago let alone 2013 if you remember that far off remember if, the, if you remember that far off year people were talking about pc gaming being dead and of course the experts were wrong about that while i believed in pc gaming i certainly was wrong about how difficult things would get in terms of hiring it's not like people expected microsoft to go on a hiring acquisition spree fortnite epic amazing success etc and this is this, and this just isn't our problem. The number, the number of opening engineer requirements for game companies, especially at like majors like EA, Ubisoft, Take Two, Epic, is just amazingly high right now. So they're competing with these huge companies for engineers, and they also have to compete with, right, like what they're getting, what they're going to offer pay, and what these other bigger companies are going to offer pay too. So I think all we can do is just pray that they get more engineers, right? Let's just pray they get more engineers. <laughs> so this question I really liked. I really did like. Um, so let me just ask it and I'll go through it and then um, I'll give my two cents on it, right? So there's a lot of grumbling, dwindling interest in this game over the last year, partly because of how long this game has been in production since 2013. Now, anybody who's been following the game for a long time will know why behind the delays. You had hiring problems. You had to create a second studio on the other side of the country. You had to completely refactor your ability code. But gamers are still comparing to PvP MMOs like Crowfall, which was announced later at least seems much further along. Um, so what exactly do you say to players that like that or who once were following CU and no longer or they're just exhausted because of the long wait? So he's pretty straightforward. He says, well, while some people have lost interest and refunded, we have more active backers now than what we've had before, and by a wide margin. I'm not happy that we lose any backers, but I hope some will return. In terms of comparing to Crowfall or other games, we are making our own engine that, that comes with a price, and if anybody thinks making an engine is easy, ask Amazon how long it is taking them to build their own better version of a Cry engine. The advantage of using a pre-built engine is that you can get the game made faster and you can get it out faster let's face it um 
So basically, he goes on to say, hey, bottom line, no MMO is doing what we're trying to do. So that is going to give basically them a leg up. And as long as they kick it out right and it's fun, it's going to have success. So overall, um, I agree with what he's saying. <laughs> How many games have you played where you've joined a large scale battle and your computer just is crap? Your frames are 15, they're 10. You know, it, it's really not an enjoyable experience. And sometimes you can't even really play the game. You know, I don't know too many games that really have that. Honestly, I don't. And for a good reason, because their code really can't handle it. Um, and computers just with the code and how it interacts just can't. No, it's just it's impossible. So um, there are a lot more questions here. And I, again, encourage you to read. Um, there's a really cool thing about VR here um, that somebody actually like jumped in VR and was like kind of playing around. And I didn't actually know that. I heard about the controller. You know, the Xbox controller or thing like that, but I didn't hear about the VR. So this article is definitely worth checking out. Um, and overall, like I said, I just want um, everybody to understand what this company has gone through, what they're going through. This way, everybody can form their own opinion, obviously, and, and just have the full perspective of what this company is just trying to do. Um, so anyway, guys, I hope you liked this this uh, video. If you liked it, please hit the thumbs up. And if you would like weekly updates and updates like this, hit that subscribe button. I will be getting State of the Realms out either on Sunday or Monday. So please look out for that. Um, but if I don't talk to you, have a good weekend. Peace out.